let's take those two because they're pretty big. <laughs> um, Gunnar, maybe you start first. And I think the mics are the mics are on. Uh, yep, they are. Thank you. Thank you for uh, addressing this. Uh, you, as you correctly said, uh, I'm not the author of the report, <laughs> but uh, the uh, question is uh, well heard. Uh, the primary concern is actually increasing, uh, you know, cannabis use. I think that's how the World Drug Report is uh, reporting. That's one. And the other thing, like I said, uh, since we have a significant younger population, the, pe the young people using, you know, cannabis also is increasing. That's what I think the report is referring to. No, sorry, I, I'm going to interrupt you, yeah, because we are so tight on time and I've tried to keep it together today. Um, Maria, can you, would you mind responding to Daniela? Daniela's question first and then Charity and, and Mohammed as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so what I would say is that first of all, as these policies are being proposed or this um, agenda is being proposed to us, as governments or as policymakers, what we need to first of all do is to demystify what exactly is this policy seeking to address. We need to run it through a number of checks. Because what you see most of the time is that our governments move into some of these discussions, they quickly sign these things because they want to sort of like um, be able to get some kind of international support on some of these things. And that is why we need to really do a lot of auditing of some of these things. Just oppose them to what is happening, the realities. Are they really things that will really support and, um, and benefit the people? And, and that is where I say that we need to really do a lot of auditing, especially as persons placed in certain strategic places, for instance, civil society, if we have the opportunity, we need to push our governments to really do a lot of analysis and demystifying what is actually behind mm -hmm. these um, 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 policies that are being pushed to us to adopt. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, I believe that we should be able to um, decipher what exactly is this going to benefit us as South Africa or mm. Ghana or Zimbabwe and not what we are doing and dancing to the music of somebody who wants a certain um, direction move mm. regarding, I mean, in, in, in terms of that particular policy. I mean, we've seen, for instance, um, let's take an example. At the um, CND level, we've had conversations and countries pushing for, um, let's say, um, ketamine, um, tramadol to be scheduled. I mean, I have always said that are our governments really looking at the impact in terms of that strategy that is being pushed by some countries to have this schedule? What will be the impact on the lives of these people that you are serving as a politician? Mm -hmm. And so if this is something that is not beneficial to our people, of course, we know some of our governments really will always want to uh, look good and also to be able to go back to these people and get AIDS and things like that. But will this really benefit our people? We need to really break down this and see if it's beneficial to our people. And if it's not, we should be honest enough to say that no, we cannot. And the institutions themselves that are also supporting government and politicians to make sure that this runs successfully. We need to be honest to say that this is not going to help us. For instance, Ministry of Health can say that this is not going to help the health sector. So why do we have to go that direction? And we can say no to that. And I believe that the people that we are serving will support such an agenda um, in terms of um, um, such circumstances. Thank you, Maria. Um, so for me, globalization was a blessing and a curse. And the fact that we live in an international community has just made it very difficult to be a lone soldier um, in a global economy. And so it's exactly what Maria says. We are influenced by um, a government or a country that's going to say, I'm going to fund this. Um, and so they dictate exactly what happens in our countries. And I think as civil society, we need to, as Maria said, have an audit where we are involved in policy discussions and decision making because a lot of our policies do not go anywhere because there is no civil society consultation. We see that with the cannabis bill. There was no research done into it and that's why we're sitting with the challenge where government is like, okay, where do we go from here? And so there isn't enough research done in regards to policy. There isn't enough civil society involvement in policy discussions. And I think it's great that departments like social development um, make an effort to, to, to adopt 
so to speak, strategic partners. So for example, SAMPR is um, the Department of Social Development strategic partner, and they always ensure that any discussions relating to drug use, SAMPR is always called to the table. And so that has influenced the National Drug Master Plan, including harm reduction explicitly, and efforts by Department of Social Development and Department of Health to actually action points or take steps to ensure that there are harm reduction strategies that will be implemented. And so I think it's really, really important that we need to hold governments accountable <coughs> on making sure that any policies that are passed or that are in discussion should involve civil society organizations and people that are actually affected to ensure that we're actually um, addressing the issue correctly. Hi, thank you. Um, so yeah, the question was around power and mm. um, you asked the question, how do we check ourselves? And the picture I was trying to, to paint was, look, if we follow the money and we see who's benefiting mm -hmm. from the kinds of legislation, from the kind of policy that we're having, that leads us to look at where, you know, it's, and, uh, where it's coming from and who's making that policy. Understanding the history and the patterns of that and how it's playing out currently, right from cannabis, what happened right through to COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so the cost of drugs, even now, um, palliative care and the cost and the access of that to poorer uh, countries and poorer communities and who has access. So even in the uh, legislative process, voluntary euthanasia, for example, mm -hmm. in European countries and richer countries, you can go for that now and there are places. So I think there's also work that we need to do in, on ourselves mm -hmm. and in our communities. Because if you start to talk about things like that, voluntary euthanasia, the whole harm reduction, that work, and the fact that our governments have backward policies. So I don't know if you know Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's, mm -hmm. uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, if your governments make crap policies, you need to educate the people. Yep. Because the governments are just representatives of the people. They tell you what the people want and what the people are saying. So if the people are saying, that, if the governments are saying it, that's where the people are at, and that's where the work needs to happen to change the policies. Thank you. Thank you so much. We can take one last question. Does anybody have? The lady over here, yes? So, Gunnar, I'll have you take the first question, if that's yeah. okay. Oh, they're both on that side. Yeah. You just. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. When it comes to the supply question, actually the, uh, the UN General Assembly's the special session, which uh, uh, had uh, the outcome document, which clearly says that it has to be a balanced approach. It really looks at supply reduction, demand reduction, and harm reduction. But when it comes to actual supply side, actually there is a lot of program that is happening. But is it enough to the extent to prevent the drugs coming in? Where, when there is a market for uh, some, something, there will be uh, you know, profit, and people are going to buy it. So uh, these are organized cartels. So it, the, it, there is so much more effort needs to be done with regard to uh, a balanced approach when it comes to supply reduction. It is not that easy. Uh, like I said in my presentation uh, that uh, uh, the new psycho uh, psychoactive substances are produced in clandestine labs, All right? It, n it requires a small room with some technology. It cannot be detected and it is coming. New, new drugs are coming into the market. 
it may not be that easy for uh, law enforcement officials to really uh, bust these uh, you know emerging manufacturing hubs but still it is happening you know so i think i think uh, lots more, when it comes to the whole issue of uh, whether be it supply reduction demand reduction or harm reduction when it is really to drugs there is much more needs to be done is what i would think thank you